In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create a very simple ping pong game in Scratch. You can play with your family or your friends in your free time. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this sprite. And we're going to paint our own sprite. And I'm going to name this Paddle and Player 1. Now, I'm just going to make the art for the paddle. Okay, so that is the art for the paddle for player one done. And what I'm going to do is uh, instead of putting it here where it originally was, I'm going to drag it to the edge of the screen right there because we want the paddles to be right at the edge of the screen. Okay, so now that I have my art done, now I'm going to start working on the code for the paddle sprite. So one green flag click forever set. Oh, um, no, forever change y by, and we're gonna make a new variable and we're gonna call it y velocity. And it's gonna be for this part only. So we're gonna forever change y by y velocity. And when the green flag is clicked, we're gonna set y velocity to zero. Now we're gonna make a custom block. We're gonna call it paddle physics. And we're gonna add an input of move velocity. And another input of the friction. And just click okay. Drag that over here. Put this inside of here and let's start doing the coding inside our custom block so the first thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to set our y velocity to our move speed sorry our move velocity times our friction no no not to our move so we're going to set our y velocity to our y velocity times our friction and then we're going to grab an if statement if our up arrow is fast then we're going to change the y velocity by the move velocity and if the down arrow is pressed then we're going to change y velocity by the move velocity multiplied by negative one So if you click the flag, that won't do anything right now. We have to insert our values into here. So for paddle physics, uh, for the move velocity, I'm going to put 2. And for the friction, I'm going to put 0 0.8. So if I click the green flag and I press my up arrow and down arrow, you can see that our player moves very smoothly. And when we stop pressing the up arrow or down arrow, it's kind of glides and then it stops. So it doesn't stop all of a sudden, it has like a very smooth animation. It can go up and down and really far. But one mistake or like one bug that there is, is that our player can just go all the way up there. And it's, it's like, it's kind of stuck there. Then we don't want it to do that. We don't want it to like, for it to be able to go over there. If we want it, so when, if it tries going over here or the player, it sends it back and it can't go any further. So to do that, I'm gonna go and grab an if statement. I'm just gonna right click duplicate that and if we're touching the edge, then I'm gonna grab an if else statement and I'm inside that, but the else I'm gonna put another if statement. And then if our y position is greater than zero, then we're gonna change the y velocity by the move velocity times negative one. And if the Y position is less than zero, then we're gonna change the Y velocity by the move velocity. So now if we try that, okay, wait, I did something wrong. Okay, so I found out what I did wrong. Uh, my, our player, like the shadow part was already touching the edge. So it kept changing it up and down and up and down. 
So we just need to make it slightly away from the edge and make it not touch the edge. So we're just going to go to, so maybe a bit closer, let's change that to 225. Uh, let's see if we can do negative 226. Let's click the green flag. And okay, yeah, that's working fine. So one green flag click go to negative 226 and 550 or actually no y is zero click the green flag and now let's try to go up here we try to go up there and then it pushes us back so that's exactly what we wanted and if you if try to go down here it will also push us back and we don't start glitching near the edge anymore so this code is working perfectly fine right now but now what we want to do is we're going to want to add the second paddle which is basically the other player because this is a two player game that you can play with your family or your friends so we're going to duplicate this and instead of naming it player one paddle i'm going to name it player two paddle and now uh basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to change these keys and instead of key up arrow i'm going to do w uh, right there w key and the s key So, yeah, okay. We also have to reposition this. Instead of putting it at a negative 226, I'm going to put it at a positive 226. So, yeah, that should work. But I'm also going to have to change this up a bit since we don't want it looking the same. So, first thing I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to flip it. Then I'm going to change the color to a nice blue color. Make like that Nintendo Switch Joy-Con type of thing. So, uh... Uh, that's not the color I want. Okay, let me see that. Yeah, that, that's good. That's a good color. And it's kind of cutting out the edges and stuff. When, I, when I'm not like full screen, so fix that. I'm just going to add an empty little box. Because that just fixes the stuff in Scratch. I don't know why. But it just does. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it right here. Yeah, now it just looks a little bit better and more clear. Now if we try the game, we can now move with W and S right here. And with the up and down arrow right here. And the same physics also apply. Okay, so yeah, everything is working really nicely right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm not gonna, now going to create the ping pong ball. Right, that's going to be moving here and here. And then these paddles are going to bounce it back and forth. So um, I created a new sprite and I'm going to name the sprite uh, ball and now I'm going to do the art for the sprite. This is the color of our ping pong ball. Now I'm going to go into the code and I'm going to grab a uh, when green flag clicked and we're going to make a variable and call the variable random and it's going to be for this sprite only and when green flag click we're going to set random to 10. Okay, now we're going to grab a forever loop and then we're going to move random steps. So we can change this value to whatever uh, whatever I want. I made a variable for it just so it's more easily accessible and I can just change it without having to change it in here. Because I'm going to actually duplicate this a lot and use it in more places. So you can send this to whatever value you want. And inside the forever loop, I'm also going to put a if on edge bounce as well. So I'm just going to click the flag. And as you can see, it's moving a random amount of steps. And it, if it's on the edge, it's also going to bounce. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to code the part where if the ball touches one of the paddles, it's going to bounce back on the other side. So I'm going to grab out an if statement. And if I'm touching paddle one or i'm touching paddle two and then we're going to point in the direction of our current direction minus 180 and we're also going to move random steps and we're going to turn turn right by uh, about well i'm gonna pick random from 
negative 20 sorry negative 20 to positive 20 so if i click the green flag and if this touches the paddle it starts bouncing and it's bouncing now in different directions and not in like the same place so you actually have to move your player sprite more if i get the ball stuck right there if you as you saw right there it got stuck in between here and started like bouncing up and back so we need to fix that so to fix that what we can do is another we can duplicate this get rid of that and this or actually wait no we can keep this if statement okay, oh my god and if we're touching the edge and we're touching paddle one or paddle two we're just gonna make it go back to zero zero which is the center so just in, like because if when we code start coding the points and if it just gets stuck there and stays there then it's just going to keep adding points for the other player and that that would be unfair so if we do code this then it'll just automatically go back to the center so it can't glitch like that anymore uh, i think it's working i'm not sure I mean, okay yeah so as you saw right there i tried i cornered it up with paddle in the edge and it automatically teleported back here so yeah that's that's what we want and the code is working really nicely okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change how these keys that are pressed for the players because i just realized that this player is on the right i mean sorry that's on the left has to press the up and down keys and those are on the right usually so i'm going to just change the red player's keys the w and s and then i'm going to change the player two keys to the up and down arrows just so like if you're playing with someone it'll be easier to reach for the keys and you don't have to like stretch your arm over the keyboard so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna code the scoring system for the game to do that we're gonna have to create two sprite two sprites we're gonna name the first sprite paddle player player one hitbox and you can copy oh wait i spelled that wrong hitbox okay you can copy this paste it there uh, except not you're gonna change player one to player two so basically all you have to do is first let's set this to uh z go to zero zero and do that and then just make it make sure it's just behind the paddle itself so probably yeah i think yeah i think that's good that's where it should be right behind the paddle so just think this is how we're gonna be doing our scoring so if the ball touches this part then the other player will be getting a point and if i copy this and then paste it into here and okay wait, let me make this position at zero zero and i'm just gonna keep scooting this back with my right arrow until i get it at a place where i want it and okay yeah that's perfect so we have these two as our hitboxes now so let's go into the ball spray and then let's start doing the coding for this so just right click duplicate this and take this part out and this part out and put if touching the player one hitbox then we're gonna now create a variable and we're gonna call it player one right player two points for all sprites and then player one points for all sprites so when the flag is clicked let's just set both of these to zero first both of them to zero and now let's do the coding for the scoring so if if the ball is touching player one's hitbox right there then it will grant 
player two a point because it got to the other side so player two we're going to change player two's points by one and we're going to also wait one second so it doesn't change that fast so it you won't get like infinite points if it's just stuck there and now you can just change this from if touching paddle player one hitbox you can change it to paddle player two and change this to player one and now i can just get rid of that and put this stuff right here now that, that we have all that sorted out let's go into the project and see if it works ball touches there player two gets the point ball touches there player one gets the point okay yeah so everything is working as how it should be now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna hide these variables because they're kind of getting in the way but i will show these the points variable the player one points will be right here and i'll make it a large readout and same for player two right there let me just see if i did that right yeah okay i did and now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hide these because they look very ugly and they don't really match our style if you don't want these hit hit boxes to be to be seen so what we can do is grab out uh when green flag clicked we're gonna show the sprite but we're gonna set the ghost effect to 100 and we're gonna go to x0 and y0 and you can just drag this and put this in the player 2 hitbox and now if we click the green flag you yeah you shouldn't be able to see those anymore but they still work and they're still granting the player points now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna draw a nice little background for this because it looks really plain and boring with just with just this white background so i'm gonna go inside the backdrops and i'm just gonna draw a nice little backdrop for it okay so i'm done drawing and designing the background for our ping pong game and i just made it look like a nice little ping pong court and like a 2d version of it so yeah that just makes the game look a little bit better okay so now we're almost done with our game i'm just gonna fix a few things that i have to fix so one of them is the ball just starts at where it was left off previously as you can see and we don't want it to do that we want it to go to zero zero i forgot to set that in the beginning so now yeah now it just starts there and goes like that so you click the green flag it starts there and it goes to random position and you have to you have to kind of act fast this ball is moving pretty fast okay oh my god i suck at this game bro okay so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna add some labels so they know which one is player one and which one is player two so i'm gonna put player one right here and player two right here and i'm just gonna draw that out in a completely separate sprite okay so i'm done drawing out the labels for the player one and player two now i'm just gonna do some really quick and simple code i'm just gonna grab a one green flag click we're gonna go to zero zero and we're also gonna show the sprite but we also want to go to the front layers yeah now let's check out our final product since we're done with all the code